Legend has it that on the longest day of the thousandth year, the stars will aid in her, Nightmare Moon's, escape. Words that have perplexed us since the very beginning. What are the stars? Who's behind this? I covered this topic August 2014 and again in August 2019 after we learned about Grogar's existence. In January, the question was asked again on Twitter, but this time, the creator of the show herself, Lauren Faust, answered. Of course she waits till after I make my video. Here's what she had to say. Watch the episode again. The stars aligned in a perfect pattern that allowed for her escape. And who controls the sun, moon, and stars? This came as quite a shock. Are you telling me Celestia orchestrated Nightmare Moon's escape? Well, that's that. Surely you're not gonna argue with the show's creator. Bet. Just like JK Rowling, Faust can't just tweet things into canon. What I care about is what ends up in the work. Besides, many others have contributed to the show at this point, each with their own visions, often overriding Faust's original vision. Look at Twyla Corn or Flurry Heart. We just can't take her words as gospel. However, since no writer has overridden these words, we can't rule them out either. So let's give it a fair shake. At first, I found it strange to think that Celestia could have brought her sister back at any time, yet waited a thousand years. That's quite the time out. But when you consider that the main six were the only ones that could reform Luna, it makes sense. Any earlier, and it'd be the same as last time. So she would have had to wait until there were new bearers before setting Nightmare Moon free. But wait a minute, releasing a villain for the main six to face and learn from? Isn't that exactly what Celestia shamed Discord for doing? If this is true, would that make Celestia a hypocrite? I don't think so, because there's a difference between these two. Discord, in all of his interdimensional craziness, has never been shown to have visions. Celestia has. In fact, she seemed to know everything about the situation, with perfect confidence. So while Discord's move was a gamble, Celestia's move, if indeed properly informed, would have been completely safe. Celestia's exact words to Discord were, you've made a grave misjudgment, which isn't necessarily judging his method, but the gamble he took and lost. So releasing Nightmare Moon wouldn't have to make her a hypocrite but it would make her a liar. And I quote, I saw the signs of Nightmare Moon's return. Now, if she directly caused those signs, it would technically be true that she saw them as well. And if I punched someone, I wouldn't be wrong to say I saw someone get punched. But that's not what it communicates. Her words communicate that she knew about Nightmare Moon's return, but wasn't involved. And in this moment of unveiling, I trust that. The test was over. There was no need to go out of her way to word things deceptively. So no, even still, I don't think Celestia set Nightmare Moon free. But I know who did. And no, it's not Grogar. Well, it kinda is, maybe. Let me explain. In that first episode, bigger forces than Celestia were already at play. Sure, Celestia played a part by sending Twilight to Ponyville, but there were a lot of other variables outside her control. Everything was perfectly orchestrated, but not by her. It was by the same force that united the main six before they even met. The same force that brought those ponies to Ponyville, each for separate reasons. In the past, I called this destiny, but now, looking back on these nine seasons, I think I understand. It was the spirit of the Tree of Harmony, setting the stage for the ponies that would bear its elements. We know it's not just some vague destiny, because we see the tree's specific M.O. It used Nightmare Moon in her traps to showcase each element, just like how it used Trials to reveal the keys in Season 4, or how it used Fears to test the students' friendship in Season 8. Even down to the fake ponies, the Tree of Harmony was at work here. So if the tree was aligning the stars metaphorically, perhaps it had a part in aligning the stars literally either directly from its own power or indirectly, using, say, an ancient ram imprisoned in the stars. I like that theory, okay? Or who knows what else, really. You might be thinking, for that matter, the tree may as well have just used Celestia. It's possible, but there's nothing connecting Celestia to the stars in the first place. In the tweet, Faust asks who controls the stars, but we've never actually seen anyone control the stars. The original story only mentions the sun and the moon, and in the transitions we've seen to and from night, the stars don't get moved. It seems to be more like our world, where they're always present, just too dull to stand out during the day. Obviously, something was animating those stars, but nothing points to Celestia in particular, especially since she only claimed to see the signs. But the jury's still out, so what do you guys think? How much of a role did Celestia play in the first episode? How much of a role did the Tree of Harmony play? 
who the heck controlled those stars? Leave your thoughts in the comments. I look forward to reading them. And if you want to support this channel financially, check out my reward tiers at patreon.com slash theburningnotion. Every dollar helps. And thank you so much to everyone who already has, especially my Alicorn tier patrons. The Nameless One, Silver Blaze, Paco Taco, Namink, Fairfallen, Mungo Jerry, Maximilian HG, Yoshi Dark Lord, Equinox 3141, Darth Silar 12, and Cameo Shadowness. You guys help make this channel possible. This has been the Brony Notion, signing out until Friday after next. Bro who?